All right, rant three coming at you. No introduction. These are eight things at the gym in the last two weeks that have pissed me off to know it. I guarantee you'll identify with some of them. Let's get right into it, starting with number one. I call number one killer karaoke. All right, this is way too common and is extremely annoying. People coming to the gym are starting to get way too carried away with singing while they're listening to the music, all right? Before you know it, these people have treated everyone in the gym to some sort of crappy-ass version of whatever song they're listening to. Now, I call it karaoke gone bad because, let's face it, there's no background music, you're singing at the top of your lungs, and you're not a professional singer. If you were, you'd be on stage performing to a crowd, but you're not. You're in a gym. So guess what you do in a gym? You exercise. Shut your mouth. Stop singing. Nobody wants to hear you. And lift some damn weights or run on the damn treadmill. Otherwise, stop. If you're not doing that, go the hell home. All right, moving on to number two. Ties directly in with number one. Talking too much when you're on your cell phone at the gym. All right, listen. I understand if you have to have an important phone call, an emergency, but for the majority of the time, we both know this. There's no emergency happening. So people talking away on their cell phones is they usually, let's say, the elliptical or the treadmill or even if they're sitting on a bench doing nothing. I mean, come on. A lot of gyms, it's gotten so bad that a lot of these gyms, they've, they've banned cell phones around the equipment because they want people talking on their phones in certain areas, but people don't pay attention to these rules. So they go back out there on the gym floor and they start occupying space and occupying time that other people need to use or want to use because they're actually serious about exercising. If you're one of these people on your cell phones having personal conversations and being stupidly loud, shut your phone off like I did in the step for number one, shut it off, close your mouth, shut up, and go home. Or at least work out and leave everybody else alone. No one wants to hear your personal shit. Number three, fat personal trainers, okay? Need I say more? I mean, come on. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, you don't have to be a pro bodybuilder. All right, you don't even have to be a physique athlete. I mean, really, you don't have to be anything. But at least look the part. All right, now, I saw this the other day while training at this retro fitness near me because power was out at my regular place. And I train at the ass crack of dawn. So you know, if this wasn't bad enough, this dude, this trainer, quote unquote, didn't even pretend to give a shit about his clients who he was group training with. And what a crock of shit this is to begin with. I mean, how hard can it be to understand this? Listen, it's not personal training or personalized training if you're in a group of people. And people still pay for this shit? I mean, come on, it's beyond me. I guess I'm all about detail. So when I'm training someone or even just training with someone, I'm you know focusing on them or so I can help them. Now, these group training deals assume that people know what the hell they're doing. But clearly, obviously, they're signing up for personal training, so they don't know what they're doing, which is why they're paying for training in the first place. You understand what I'm saying here? It's frustrating. These people are shelling out money, getting crappy-ass deals, making no progress, getting screwed out of their cash, and these dumbass, fat, out-of-shape, uninspiring personal trainers are pretending to do, a shit, to do shit. We both know nothing's working here. It pisses me off. All right? Moving on. This is called stockpiling, all right? Now, listen, I get it. If you're going to be pyramiding on a set on a certain day and you want to gather up, I don't know, two or three separate pairs of dumbbells that are in descending and descending order, I get that. But anything beyond that is kind of obnoxious and selfish to everyone else in the damn gym. I mean, let's say you're going to hit 50s for one set and then 60s for the next. That's cool. But if you get every weight level from 50s through 90s and you haven't even come near 90s in a year or more, we both know that you're just stroking your own damn ego with wishful thinking and obnoxious behavior. So cut this shit out, all right? Nobody's impressed. Moving on to the next, the next one. These are called momentum rows, all right? I probably don't even have to explain this, but I will anyway. Okay. By this time, you all know my feelings about using momentum in the gym. I fucking hate it when I see this happen. Now, hate's an understatement, really, to be honest. I, in fact, despise this. You know that feeling when you hear nails scraping against a chalkboard or maybe for anyone younger than me who's watching this who only had whiteboards at school? It's like the feeling of, I don't know, when you're chewing your food and you accidentally scrape your teeth together, it sends chills, chills everywhere in your body. All right? no, this happened to me a few times and it just fucks with my entire nervous system to the core. That's the level to which I despise momentum in the gym. How about these people that do bent rows old school and highly effective for building thick ass back, by the way, T-bar rows even as well or any back movement with momentum. To these people, I say, what the hell are you thinking? If you think you're getting stronger by using this stupid weight and this momentum to move it, you're dead wrong. 
And I can't believe you're still ignorant and stupid enough to think that that's going to do any damn thing for you. Plus, you have to know that what you're ultimately just going to do is injure yourself, in which case I both pity you and those who are going to have to take care of your dumbass because you fucked up your back being stupid in the gym. I'm also so damn tired of people complaining about their back injuries and then going back to the gym and training the exact same way that got them injured in the first place. Just a bunch of dumbasses, I swear to God. Right? And then there are those people that approach me, and you, put, you probably know these people too. They approach me and they ask for advice on some aspect of training and nutrition. Look, I know you probably mean well, and you even probably want to improve, but we both know that good intentions don't always result in follow-through, especially when it comes to health and fitness, or even bodybuilding especially. Why? Well, that's easy. It's because it's hard work to improve, and it takes an overall commitment to the goal that's rare, even among gym goers. That's very rare. Now, I am by no means saying that these people are wasting their time. They're certainly better off being active in the gym, even if their training or lifestyle doesn't evolve too much. It's just better to be involved in weight training than to, than to not be. We all know that. I'm just saying here that if you're one of those people that just asks for advice and doesn't follow it all the time, leave me and my friends who know what we're doing the hell alone. I spent enough years to know as a trainer when a person doesn't have follow through. This is the same reason why New Year's resolutions are just ridiculous. I mean, if you wanted to change something about yourself for the better, just fucking do it. Make a resolution. Make it to yourself right now, regardless of the damn day. New Year's be damned. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference to me or anybody else. This next one is called chest or trampoline. Last, you've all seen this guy, all right? We all know this person. This is the guy who brags about what he can bench or how much he can bench. He's probably insecure. We all know he is. And then proceeds to get under the bar with whatever weight he is, you know, BSing about. Now he lifts it off the rack and then proceeds to drop it on his chest and bounces it back up to the top of the movement and probably locks his elbows out at the top. Now to this guy I'm saying very clearly, so you'll understand me, you are not fooling anybody and you're not actually lifting anything. You are using your chest as a damn trampoline. And the last time I checked, our bodies were not meant to perform that function. You'll be lucky if all you do is crack a rib, but for fuck's sake, just knock it off. Stop all the broing is the very last one. Today, I was at the gym this morning, very early, and these two 20-somethings came in, and their entire conversation, conversation excuse me, was comprised of, bro this, bro that, fuck that, fuck this, bro, bro, bro. It must have been, I must have heard 150 bros in the matter of 20 minutes, and all they did was talk about fighting and drinking and bro this and fuck that. Listen, I'm not coming down on these 20 year olds, but just stay away from me, please. Honestly, I'm just begging you because listen, I'm 43 years old. I'm beyond all that shit. I'm training harder than you anyway because these people, you did three sets in 15 minutes. Come on. I did an entire workout in 40 minutes. You're talking too much. You're broing too much. No one wants to hear it, especially me and people that I work out with. Stop. Go home, bro at home, and do it with yourselves. All right, that's my list of eight things that piss me off. Rant number three. I'll have another one coming up for you in a few weeks. Hope you enjoyed it. Soon to be Samson Strong hoodies coming out for the winter season. Pay attention for that when that happens. Until then, follow me on Instagram at SamsonStrong6. And as usual, be Samson Strong.